black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. I have been a long, long time since we've had one, but I got a cheeky subscriber sponsored request from my guy, Sean. We're gonna keep the last name under lock and key because he didn't say if he wanted to shout out or not. But what he's looking for is a buffalo chicken wrap with fries, which are still in the freezer. We'll get them out here soon. But here are some fixings. I'm gonna go with a cornflake crust today. Pretty easy toss together. Couple things we need to grab still, but you know, let's throw this together. A buffalo chicken wrap and fries from my guy, Sean, and some shots. <laughs> Cause today's been a day. All right, let's get it. First things first, we gotta blitz off these corn flakes for the crust for these fingers. So a minute later, we have our chicken crumb. Yes, that's chicken crumb. Get your head out of the gutter. All right, slapping down a single big boy breast. Just trim off some of this stuff here. But well, we're just gonna get a few finger strips out of this. So probably, let's see here. Probably just something like, like so. One there, one here. Keep them uniform. We're just gonna do one nice buffalo wrap today. So probably need about maybe four nice pieces would be my guess, but I'll just break this down completely. But I'll probably use only about four. All right, so we've got our uniform strip chunks. Next up, a couple eggs for adhesive. Get ahead and beat those boys up. Real nice and good light. Next we go tenders into flour for a light coat of flour. Just like so. There you go. And then we do egg. And then we do crumb. Just like so. Pack it in. Flip, tuck, and shimmy. Pitter patter, let's get at her, bud. My inner Canadian coming out. We'll talk about that today. That's uh, gonna be on today's stories. Really depressing stories today, guys. But we'll talk about it. And repeat process. These will all go to a plate and into the freezer for 15 minutes just to set up before we get into the fry. And to the freezer we go. Oh my guy doesn't mind, but I weirdly want some green onion in this. So we're gonna slice off spring onion, green onion, whatever you want to call it. But I do want some in it. The most basic of buffalo sauces, of course, butter and franks. Spin that around. Done and done. And then for this, I think I'm just gonna do, I'm not gonna do a shredded lettuce, I think I'm just gonna do a rough chop style lettuce, like the BK burger, like a Whopper style lettuce, just a little, little thicker pieces, not super shaven, just sort of like so, just how I'm feeling today. Sometimes my lettuce preferences change per day. So today we're doing air fryer tenders, and that's why I put them in the uh, freezer there to kind of get them firm up a bit. We're back here like 15 minutes later. I just want to brush these with some oil for some extra crispiness on the coat before we go into the air fryer. Just kind of dab it in, dabble do ya. And we could probably go both sides. Just a little trick I've been playing with along the way, messing with the air fryer, trying to get good, good fries in the air fryer. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm debating, I don't know if I should go 400 like high off rip or if that'll burn them, so I might go like, 350 or 370 or something a little lower and slower and then check them and see if i need to crank it up a bit all right so what say you to this air fryer chicken tendy cornflake exterior what say you to that 10 minutes at 350 i think they're beautiful just absolutely beautiful <laughs> He is trying to remain in good spirits when the Lord's knocking him down. That being said though, can't be sad at that. Cannot be sad at that. 
I'm not gonna season them. There's gonna be enough salt in this with the buffalo sauce and a little secret additive that I have coming in next. We're gonna let those cool though and then come down to temp because I don't like soggy, hot, wet chicken in soggy burrito wrap. So it's perfect to let those cool while we cook the best fries in the known universe. We've seen them before, cabin dish, flavor crisp. Let's get a helping. So these are 400 crank, uh, maybe like 10 to 12 minutes. So these guys have settled to room temp and it's sauce coating time. And to save on a dish, I'm just gonna do it right here in the pot that I made the sauce in one by one, one by each. Now let's go ahead and build this wrap. All right, so I want this in a really soft wrap. I just microwave these to give them like almost a steam. Cause I really want like just like a really soft, pliable wrap for this. I don't want any toast or anything like that. I just want it to be really nice and steamy soft, but let's build it. First things first, just a little bed of ranch just for some adhesive for the lettuce pad that we're gonna put down right here. Lettuce pad goes in, lettuce pray, <laughs> lettuce pray. <laughs> Idiot. Gonna do a spin move right quick to make it sexy for the next part. And that is just laying <laughs> tendies. Actually, I'm gonna put the thinner side to the middle, thicker to the out, and then I'm gonna match the thinner to the thinner and the thicker to the out here. And I think I'm just gonna leave it at two tenders. I don't wanna get too cocky. All right, a little surprise, it's not blue cheese. I don't like blue cheese, but we're gonna try it with a little feta drizzle. Should still add a nice little creamy, salty kick without the mold. Y'all out here really eating moldy cheese, huh? Another light ranching for adhesive. These green onions, spring onion that I want in here. And y'all know I just, I gotta have some crispies because anything already crispy, like a crispy chicken, you add a little of these to it, just takes it up to the next crispy notch. And the next part, the fun part, the sketchy part, what we'll get it part is, oh, we're breaking is the roll. I thought these were supposed to be soft. Bias diagonal, a little center reveal for y'all. Okay, and then we take it to the plate. Let's do a little stack up. Take it to the plate, do a little high stack. Get our fries. Get our fries in, fry bowl. And then how about, how about this a little sneaky move? How about a little rogue tender on the side, naked for dipping? All right, Sean, my man, this one's for you. Let's get to it. All right, y'all, subscriber sponsored request. I don't know when the last time we had one of these was, but I know that it's been a while. So uh, just a heads up to you, Sean. I, I don't know if you were expecting like a gigantic buffalo chicken burrito, but I got to keep it light today because unforeseen circumstances happened today on the job that I quoted from yesterday about the girl who stole the virginity and my last video and the dad and that and then blah, blah, blah. And I was going to do that job today. And then I got stranded, SOS, truck broke down. It's been a rough day. <laughs> got home. Could have been in terrible spirits. Secretly am putting on a mask and a good face, but I figured I got time. If I got four hours before I got to go meet my dad and his buddy at the shop to help with whatever's wrong to diagnose and, you know, lend a helping hand and be there to learn with whatever's wrong. I know some decent things about vehicles, but, uh, these guys have graduated knowledge. So I got to keep it light. I got to keep it tight. It's about four o'clock right now. I got to be there for five. So I figured... I would bang this out and then go do that. And I don't want to be gutted for it. So um, here we have exactly like how I was craving it with a little feta cheese, some onion action, and like the more soft style tortilla. <laughs> and uh, we'll get into this and chat about this little day I've had so far. And, 
hopefully what all is going to happen. And I have made the executive decision that we're doing, we're doing per bite ranch douses. Okay. All right. I'm really actually excited for this. I've been craving this since, you, since uh, Sean asked me to make it. I've been thinking about it for like days. Perfect. Really perfect. Just the right size. I love when the chicken's not too crazy stacked. I just like a neater, tighter wrap. A manageable wrap. That's what I like. That's why I like those huge burritos, like the football size burritos, the head size burritos. And they get they fall apart and I like a manageable wrap. That's why McDonald's snack wrap was so clutch. But anyway, so we get to the tail. So a couple of videos ago, I, I said like my serpentine belt or fan belt or whatever, like was squeaking. I took it to have a look at Like I changed out the belt. Still the noise uh, persisted, like the squeal or squeak. Not super loud and bad, but clearly something needed to be fixed was like in my head I'm like okay this next week I had a plan to take it take it to get looked at uh where my dad works because like he works in a blue collar setting where they have all of the gear and a lift and everything um he works at a place that they lay they do huge like pipe fitting jobs basically like they lay massive gas pipelines essentially um, but they have flatbed trucks and a fleet of trucks and a lit like a hoist and all all the things you could ever need to like fix vehicles because they have to ranch on their own fleet right so super lucky in that regard to like have that as an option to just even take it there to have it looked at just to kind of assess and then try to kind of fix whatever might be wrong with it but in the meantime, I'm like, okay, hopefully it'll still be good. And like, I should be able to, to get by for another couple of days. Right. Didn't think anything of it. And my dad was like, yeah, I don't know. You could probably go do that job. So anyways, I go to the job this morning and it's the dad of the, 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 the woman now who de-virginized me back in the day. And like, him and I are chopping it up while I'm loading it, loading the truck and the tr this little trailer that I have. And him and I are talking about relationships. And he's like, I'm retired. I just got in a new relationship. Talking about his girlfriend. <laughs> and then I'm like halfway through loading up and who rolls up? <laughs> his daughter. She came over and like, I didn't know she was coming over, but came over to visit and I haven't like really seen her in like a long time. We've been in communicato like over the years on, uh, Insta here and there or Facebook, but no like real lifey type hangs. So she rolls up and, uh. I'm like, oh, I'm just sit here shooting the breeze with your dad about his new relationship. We're having relationship chats. And she's like, oh, God. And then so her and I start chatting it up, just talking about whatever, random stuff. And uh, that's all good and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so 
got it all loaded up. I'm like, all right, I'm out. I'm going to go to the dump. But like I, there was still like another load. It was going to be two loads. And how am I already sweating from this? What a rookie lightweight when it comes to the spice game. Um, <laughs> so I turned, it, turned on my truck and I knew it was going to have like a, a squeal like a, in the start. Once you get on the revs on the gas, like it seems to dissipate. But when you're at low idle, there's like a squeal and a squeal, and then you go and it seems it's like fine. Anyways, I pull out, pull right onto like this more main road. And uh, immediately I just notice like something doesn't feel right. And then I'm kind of seeing smoke, like bluish smoke blowing in my tailwinds mm -hmm. like that. Blowing, yeah, blowing in my tailwinds in the rear view. And I'm like, okay, that's not right. And I could smell something, but no like loud crash bang, nothing crazy like that. And then all of a sudden I go to hit the brakes and there's like no brakes almost. And I'm like pumping, pumping. And I'm like, well, it's because it doesn't have the trailer and this load. Thinking it was just the, like the, like the inertia, like the, that forward momentous pressure of the, the weight of the load. Uh, fucking with the brake system and then I'm like no and then all of a sudden my steering was like I had to be fucking Schwarzenegger back in the 80s or like fucking Hercules or some shit or you know the guy who can pull Excalibur sword to even like steer even a bit so my power steering's out I'm, and I'm like oh fuck so I'm like I gotta get to like a side road So I'm just like, think quick, think quick. Rip off to the right on the side road, the first right side road I see. Of course, the side road I hit is this like tiny residential street with, shit you not, like van, like all the regular vehicles, but then there were city workers doing uh, hydrants and water testing shit like running water in lines and stuff i don't know exactly what they're doing but there's q vans like package delivery style vans trucks an excavator a fucking bobcat <laughs> a front end loader i i spurred in and like reef my steering wheel so i can like get off to the side and try to make room in this residential street. <laughs> but now I'm in and amongst the likes of like 15 men's men's guys men. Like just really like, you know, the dudes who do it. Those those blue collar mans. Which, shout out to them. They do all like the hard ass fucking labor jobs that keep the world going. But I kind of blend in because... <laughs> I'm in the truck, I've got the trailer, I got the load for the for the uh for the dump. You know, I'm kind of like a guy's 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 dude. Not really a man's man's man, but like a guy's dude's guy. So I hop out kind of incognito, like chameleon-esque, looking a little bit rough and tumble, but not really because you know I got like those frame glasses that look all artist-like with the tortoise. And then, you know. I got like dirty sneakers, not steel toes or anything. And I got fucking like my, <laughs> I got my pants, like how I roll up the cuff on the ankle, like showing a little ankle and shit, but I look a little rough and tumble on the top. So I'm kind of blending in. And then I am like, okay, fuck. So I'm just in process mode. Like, what do I do here? And, you know, initially I'm just like investigate the scenario under the, under the hood. So go to the hood. It's what I pretty much thought it was going to be. Probably that belt. Look down. Belt's missing. Look further down. It's wrapped around the bottom of the chassis. So I'm like, okay, well, that's the problem here. Clearly no power steering because I don't have my belt. Wiggle under the truck, retrieve belt. Luckily enough, truck starts, still runs everything. Like the engine didn't seize up, but something seized up to where the pulleys weren't going around. 
and probably just rip the belt. We have yet to diagnose that. That's why I'm going back at five. But I, uh, I, uh, I get on the horn with the guy who I'm taking the load for. And I'm like, yo, like my truck just fully lost power steering. I'm like on the side of the road. Uh, the, your job, like it's, I'm SOS right now. I got people I got to call, but we're not going to get your job done today. But maybe we'll figure it out another day, blah, blah. But I still have all this load. And then so I'm sitting there still in and amongst these, these, these guys, like these working boys. And, uh, in my head, I thought for sure that like that inner Canadian niceness and then the intrigue of a blue collar dude that you generally see, like if they see a down soldier, if you will, they'll generally come and be like, what's going on under the hood? Like, let's take a look. Let's get the torque wrench out, see what's happening. You know, like that's very like the Canadian blue collar way. I just, it's like, I think Americans like, you know, it's just help your, your downed ass neighbor kind of thing. And I thought for sure one of them would just come and investigate, but none of them asked me shit. They just went on lunch break and they all went into their respective vehicles and started eating sandwiches and shit and then the one the these guys beside me was like the main guy and his helper and the main guy was like a bit overweight and i could hear him from his car be like yeah this is what i get fucking today i got a 20 dollar salad my, my wife is the, she's making me eat salad today and then the other guy's eating like this huge meatball and cheese hoagie right beside him and I hear them chopping it up about the the Panthers against the Hurricanes or some shit. They're talking hockey shop. Um, I'm just like sitting here on the horn with like trying to get on the horn with my dad because he would be close to his lunch break too because he's at work. And I get a hold of him I'm like SOS. This is my situation. Can you please help save me? And he's like, yeah, we'll figure it out be there soon like so he rounded up his buddy from work who's younger like probably my age -ish. he's such a be beauty always down to help out with whatever's necessary um also i was i had a job interview at like two o'clock ish I was trying to do this job get it done get to the interview as a place that I kind of want to work at or as you know looks intriguing to work at um and so I call that guy I'm like hey I uh I was I I'm like hey I do like lawn stuff and dump runs and just side hustle stuff to uh make extra cash on my way to the dump my truck broke down i'm stranded i won't be there for the interview just to be like i can't make it if you need to move forward with choices and not to waste your time like i always do that with job stuff try to respect other people's time i was like well you want to just do a phone interview i was like sure so we go in and start on a phone interview my dad's calling me back. I'm like, hey, man. My dad's calling me back. I have to answer because he's coming to save me. So, talking to my dad. But, okay, be there in 25, 30 minutes. I'm on the way other side of town. They get there. Get it loaded on a flatbed. Bring it back to the shop and then I head home really stressed <laughs> angry frustrated sad um you know just curveball after curveball just life <laughs> failure after failure or whatever I don't know 
take it in stride. Someone else in the world has it worse than I do. It's how the world works. It's not fair. But someone else has it way better than I do, too. Because the life is a fucking... The world is an absolute circus of fair, unfair, tragedy, atrocity. Like, for example, yesterday, no, two days ago, this 10-year-old kid in my city got hit by, on the way to school, on his bike, he got hit by the bus coming from school, like the school bus. He's dead, 10 years old. So his parents are going through that. So my struggles, mm, you know what I mean? Not even comparable at all in the slightest. So when I take that into account, excuse me, <laughs> that just escaped. I just try to be like, okay, could be way worse. I got saved for free, didn't have to pay for tow truck. <laughs> you know, I'm so lucky to have that and then be able to go to their shop and probably do the work with my dad and his friend on the cheap, right? So super grateful for that. Um, and then, yeah, so that brings me <laughs> to getting home. I took 30 minutes to have like a, a woosaw moment with the universe, with the energy, with God, with whoever. I'm like, you, you really, we're, we're really doing it <laughs> these days. We're, we're really getting testy. <laughs> Let's figure this out soon, me and myself and the higher power, because he's coming to his rope's end these days. And, uh, and then I was like, you know what? I got four hours. Sean hooked me up to make this video. I got to make the fucking video because I want to make this video. It's delicious to make this video. It's enjoyable to make this video. And then I get to vent about my day <laughs> and tell you guys maybe a little bit of a funny, tragic story. Um, or make light of a tragic story. Make tragedy into comedy. Isn't that what life's about? I believe so. So, hammered this out, editing, uploading as fast as I possibly can. I hope I can get this, this out before I go. I may not be able to, though. So it may come out a day later or in the evening. I'm not sure. Likely a day later than the actual event. Um, so this isn't exactly real-time-ish. But... Um, yeah, just wanted to hammer this out, eat kind of light, and then go and see about my whip because I really hope it's like not that big of a deal. It's pretty salvageable. My dad and d dude seem optimistic. They're like, no, nah, no, nah, that's fine. We'll figure it out. It'll be, it's not toast. It's not going to scrap yard. You don't have to sell it for parts. I, we'll get it back going. Just a matter of finding the uh, the main issue and then just go from there. So I'm praying, I'm hoping. I hope, like, if y'all want to give me some positive eyes or some prayers to God, like whatever you believe in, I'll take all, all the positive energy I can get right now. Because, man... It's just, <laughs> life is really one after another, all the time, for a long time, and I'm like really getting exhausted, like existentially exhausted. I've said it before, um, but bit by bit, that, those bricks on that wall just keep crumbling, and that base foundation just kind of starts sliding into the mud. And then next thing you know, you're in like that slippery mud slide. And then you're in the quicksand. And then you're just like, oh shit, like I'm drowning here, bruh. <laughs> and I'm kind of losing my mind. So anyways, uh, that's my life and my story right now. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thanks, Sean. And uh, till the next one, eat good, live well. Stay true. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. 
Thank you for watching. Eat good, live well, and stay true.